Hi guys, we're approaching the halfway point of the season, given we're doing 9 games per season now, and we've just completed our game beginning with D. That game was Donpachi, and what a belter it was. As mentioned by some, probably not as good as Dodonpachi, but an absolute classic nonetheless, from the legends at Cave. This was their first game, setting a template they've loosely followed subsequently. The game is a vertically scrolling shmup, where you have the option of 3 different ships, with each one having a slightly different firing pattern and power. It's generally accepted that the blue ship is the best, with a higher spread of bullets, meaning you can take more things out. The game follows a fairly standard format of a scrolling stage with lots of weak enemies, followed by a more powerful boss at the end. The first level is pretty easy, but it rapidly ramps up. I managed to get to level 4, which I was fairly pleased with. Cave do such a great job of getting huge amounts going on on the screen at any one time, never giving you a break until the stage ends. We did have a few people that were already fairly familiar with this game, so let's take a look at the scores. We've had 20 people play this week, including a return from A. Creighton, who owns this board, and Marty Dyer, who is very much a shmup enthusiast and has a weakness for cave games. Away from our top three, the scores have been pretty close. Milthy in 11th, through to me in 5th, are only separated by 700,000 points. That is getting close to, or just getting past, the level 3 boss. Graham is just ahead with 4.4 million, likely getting a bit further in level 4. Our top 3 though, all separated themselves from the pack, and it's the usual suspects. Jeff is in 3rd with 6.3 million, which is a great score. Once again, Perla set an excellent score, but probably away from his best. He finishes in 2nd. But taking his first victory in the competition is my pal from Instagram, A. Creighton. As I said, he owns this PCB and is the only person to score over 10 million. So very well done there. Here is the score distribution, and we can see that there is a gradual increase in scores, but then very much a plateau, with many people getting stuck around the 3 to 3.5 million mark. Beyond that, we have two bins of two, Graham and Juff in third and fourth, and then our top two in the same bin too, so not much separating them there. And now the difficulty curve. Here we can see after an initial increase, there are a few big plateaus, with people getting stuck at different points. The big plateau in the middle is the one we've already seen, getting stuck at or just beyond the level 3 boss. Beyond that, it's another steady increase, up to a Creighton at the top. And finally the progress over the two weeks. Juff was the first to post a decent score at around 4 million before increasing and then Pearl moving things on again. A Creighton played around the midway through the two weeks and increased his score a few times before dropping a close to and then past the 10 million point score. That's a great effort on this tough game. Regarding when most people were playing, a lot of the action happened in the first week. I put a few scores in around the halfway mark, and then there were a few scores after that. A few people got to points where they didn't feel like they could improve without significantly more time investment. I certainly felt that way once I got to level 4. With another game down, here is what the high score table is looking like. We've got a couple of big movers, and that means most other people are down the table. My best place this season sees me climb into 8th, including being jumped by both A. Creighton after taking that win, and then Pearl who is up 7 after taking that second place. Our top 5 though remain unchanged. Blue Yak has closed the gap slightly to Mark, but both of those guys are a chunk behind Bob, who is then dropping away from our leaders. Just like last season, it's Graham and Big Juffa battling out at the top. There is now just 8 points between these two guys as we approach the halfway mark of the season. So let's see what the next game is. So with Don Patchy wrapped up, we're now onto the letter E. I'd say there is the weakest lineup of options for this letter, but there are definitely some good games here too. I've had 15 games sent to me, and there were definitely some clear favourites. Elevator Action got 5 votes, and its sequel Elevator Action Returns got a vote too. The other popular game was Escaluda, which has 3 votes, and this was the selection for our winner A Creighton, giving it a total of 5 slots too. So let's set things going and see what we get. Okay, slowing down. Ooh, Escaluda. 
Oh yeah, there we go. So, I mean, this is what happens when you win the game. You get the uh, the slot trebled. Um, and yeah, my Instagram pal at Creighton basically plays when he's got the PCB. And so that's why he played Donpachi. And so we've got back-to-back -back cave games, which certainly personally I'm not complaining about. Um, but we've got Escaluda, which is a absolutely great game. So yeah, I'll go make a video and tell you guys a bit about it and uh, see you in a sec. So this week's game is Escaluda, which makes it back-to-back -back shmups from Cave. It's one of the latest games that we've had, being released in 2003. It's the ninth shmup that Cave released, so they have very much honed their skills by this point. Unlike some of their previous games, it has a fantasy setting, and you play as either Agaha, who has a more powerful forward shot like the red ship in Donpachi, or as Tataha, who has a spread shot more like the blue ship in Donpachi. I'll let Pearl tell us which one is best here but often the spread shot is a good option in these cave games. One of the interesting dynamics here is the shield, which you have four uses of per life, but if you get hit by a bullet, it's used automatically, using up two slots, so you're actually able to take a number of hits before dying. This reflects a slightly more forgiving game compared to some of the earlier ones. I've played a little of this before, mostly on the PS2, for which the port is one of the better ones of a few cave games that came to that system. Regarding ROMs, We'll be using the 2003-10-15 master version, with default settings as usual. For the next game, please send me those beginning with the letter F, and I think there are plenty of good ones to choose from. There are a few fantasy zone games, Final Fight would be great, Fixate or Friendly would be cool too, as sequels to legendary original games, and I'm sure Graham will be choosing Flicky. So I hope you'll enjoy playing some Escaluda, and I'll be back in two weeks with the scores. See you then.